All right, hey everyone, welcome to the No Guts, No Galaxy podcast number 156. We are your hosts, Phil and Darren. Today is February 2nd, 2017. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my homie, to the old man himself, Mama Bear, Papa Bear, I don't know, whatever you go by right now, the Beard of Wisdom, the, homie. the Wisdom of Beard. How are you doing, Darren? Good. You seem a little bit quiet. I don't know if that's just... Uh... Just just reasons? Yeah, just reasons. Are you know. further from your mic? No. It's starting to sound a little bit better. Now you're should sounding I, better. Should I, should I just lean in here and just kiss it? Just lean in. Lick it? Give and... me that. Yeah. yeah. How you doing, man? I'm very, very well. I just uh, just got out of the shower, made some coffee. Obviously, this is a little bit later than our normal podcast hour. Uh, no. So, it's still uh, Wednesday, right? I like, guess, isn't it? Like, that's how sure. it works. Yes. Yeah. If if, if uh, time is non-linear for you, like that new Arrival movie, I mean, it could be. Uh, then it could be still Wednesday. So, anyways, yeah. like to give Obviously a quick shout out. We didn't have the podcast yesterday. Yes. Um, hey, speaking of shout outs, would you mind doing some shout outs to maybe some recent um, subs or follower, or you know, anything that we potentially missed while we were gone or oh, whatever? I, we, I don't miss anything. You don't miss I'm, anything. No, I'm all. I always on feel it. bad when we're doing the roundtables and stuff, and we can't, uh, you know, acknowledge them. And uh, yeah, anyway, better not you're be on top of it. No, yeah, man, we've had um, we're up to 194 subs. Uh, wow. Core Knight was our latest uh, 28 month. Um, we had let's see, just yesterday. Let me go through here. We had made this just for NGNG events. By the way, one of our longest viewers out there, as far as oldest viewers, I still swear it's like Russ or Paul as like a total troll account. Made. A leap of faith yesterday and sub to the channel uh we had um let's see ib ibn sos i just call him sos because i don't know how to pronounce reasons uh he subbed yesterday we had a uh, sign mink uh sub yesterday um you don't count that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't you don't but it's so fun <laughs> Uh, let's see. We had it's Sa- Lauren's alt account. Yeah, that's what Bear Claw thinks. It's a uh, Sarsaparilla kid. Um, sub yesterday. We someone went a little crazy with bits yesterday. Just looking at you, a little bit crazy. A little bit crazy yesterday. Um, but uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys so much for your support. Um, getting us to 194 subs and it continues to grow. And I don't think it's too far off. From hitting that uh, 215, two more emoticons. Yeah, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get well, there. Well, even even hitting 200 is uh, worth it's, mentioning, even though we don't oh get God. any more emoticons. It's um, it's crazy. But the support is absolutely appreciated. Thank you guys for uh, you know, and a lot of you for being with us for so long. Um, anyway, yeah, this is podcast number 156. Um, it's gonna be a little bit more of a casual podcast tonight. You're than casual, normal. whatever. I am right now. I am relaxed. And uh, we don't have any, like, I don't think, you know, major debates to go on tonight, but uh, we do have some news and I think we can maybe leave it open to uh, whatever. Community questions, yeah, discussions, questions, topics. Tech Zick wants my hat. I want my hat. So good luck with that. I love this hat. Atlas head hat. Oh, what, what, oh speak. Well, we'll get to that anyway. Sorry, I'm drinking um, coffee. What, what, do you, what are you saying? Isn't it, dude? Isn't it just like it just erases your mind of everything else other than, uh, you know, enjoying your your, your coffee? Uh, Dowler, filthy casual confirmed. I'm, I'm assuming you're coming from uh, Casual Joker's channel. Uh, or you're just filthy and casual like many of us. Very good to have you. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, I did just take a shower. Just want to say uh, again, welcome to everyone out there. If you want to help support the stream, retweets are appreciated. Dropping that link in the chat. Yes. And of course, I just want to say good afternoon, everyone, morning, night, wherever you are in the world. What is going on? Um, Yeah, we've been uh, having a good time. A little bit busy behind the scenes. A lot of cool stuff. Um, I know this isn't necessarily in this order. We don't really have an order. So can I go ahead and drop the the news? The the new news? The new news every... (laughs) No, because I want to make that. Let's let's deal with MWO oh, first, but maybe that'll give you an idea. You're of what's gonna coming you're gonna make them wait now for some really I am, cool but news. There, there's there's a reason. I'm not you doing know, this to you guys. That's remember it. when we first started the podcast five years ago? We used to have kind of like um, segments or categories or whatever. You know, back then we had like Mech of the Week and we had whatever. Um, we'd talk about the novels. 
I feel like we're almost going to get back to not having segments of our podcast, but maybe because 2017 is going to be adding a lot of content to what we could be discussing, obviously, with the Battletech game coming out. And that's what Phil wants to talk about. Um, but also with, you know, continued growth with Catalyst, new tabletop stuff coming up. Uh, Randall has mentioned that he wants to be on the podcast. I think he said monthly, but maybe even said weekly. I think monthly is better. Once a month, get Randall on here, talk about new tabletop stuff, new, uh, what do you, what is, what are you doing? You're distracting me. Um, even though that was on delay and, uh, new novels, whatever. And I feel like we've got just a lot of stuff to talk about, including obviously Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries as well. And so this year, I feel like our pa podcast is going to have the chance to grow a bit again and kind of expand upon what we're discussing uh, outside of just MWO, but more stuff within the Battletech universe. And that really excites me. Yeah. Sorry, I was playing with my uh, my screw. All right. I, I, you what actually, the hell you, is going on there? You, you got me this. You don't remember this? You got no. me the uh, Stormcrow. It painted. You sent it to me as I think it was like my birthday gift. I think yeah, I think it was my birthday a few years ago. You don't remember this? You have no idea. You poor soul. Your memory. No, I'm I'm waiting to see it in the stream. Oh, you you didn't see it already? It's already no no no. It was already up on the screen. Oh, I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah I, I remember. Okay, okay. I, I had uh, you see paint it. Yeah. Well, yep. I, I almost felt bad for you. The reason I'm being distracted right now is I'm hearing messages that people are leaving a server. Oh, is that? And it's, I don't know what the hell I'm hearing. Uh, are you it's, talking about um, TeamSpeak 3? Are you hearing voices? I, I'm hearing voices in my head, man. You know, what are, what are the voices saying? But anyways, guys, just want to say, uh, like yeah, pr pretty excited. Um, technical difficulties. Anyway, yeah, uh, much excitement, much happening. Um, I feel like this is going to be a great year for the podcast. We're going to be able to talk about a lot of stuff, have more podcasts more often. Well, or just keep up the, the well, ones we, a week, we've been doing a pretty nice. good job, I think. And now, granted, have. it's like, you know, sometimes we're recording on Thursday instead of Wednesday, but we're here. I mean, that's got to count for something. Um, well, we made sure that, uh, if we weren't doing it yesterday, we would do it tonight, but, uh, and we yeah, had an important reason for not recording we, we were sort of on time crunch we had a meeting you'll yeah. hear more about that meeting later it's but, coming up let's talk mwo all right let's jump into this let's what, what's your favorite first. what's your favorite what are you enjoying right now playing oh actually no i'm gonna take a uh, are you enjoying your uh whacker of bushes um i do enjoy the bushwhacker so i've been basically i i left it was really hard for me to get out of those Marauder 2Cs, yeah. but I did. I played the hell out of those mechs over the holidays. Um, so now my time is basically being divided between Bushwhackers and then just jumping in my beloved What's Warhammer. your favorite uh, Marauder 2C? I'm gonna Not say, the Scorch. Oh, mine's a Scorch, dude. That thing is stupid. Yeah, I just don't play that one as much. I was playing, I play all of them. I have like five builds that I switch between, but yeah, Scorch isn't necessarily my favorite. Mm. I run um, Dual Goss, Dual Peep, like a meta whore that I am. It is a, it's a great mech. It's really fun. It I is. I love it. But the Bushwhacker is fast, maneuverable. Um, you know, I saw, it's funny. It's, of, it's of course subjective, the, the, the look of the book, Bushwhacker. I, Love it. I did recently see a video by Shivaxi or Shivaxi. Mm -hmm. um, he thinks it's ugly as hell that it has like a cancerous growth coming out of the back <laughs> or whatever. Um, and, and he compared it to some, you know, Mech Warrior 4 and, and whatever yeah. else it was. I've always thought that this is one of those designs that to me is extremely um, functional. It just looks functional and it looks like a tank on legs. And I love it because of its ugliness you know it's like it's you know, not the pretty it's like the millennium falcon yeah. is the millennium falcon all you know curvy and shiny and you know uh it, it to me it's functional and i love that design and there's something realistic about it and that's why the um bushwhacker's always been a favorite of mine and uh and i do like alex's translation of it a lot yeah i was gonna say i do as well and of course from a playability standpoint um i think what 
What makes it a little bit different compared to the other 55 tonners is the heavy ballistic capabilities plus energy and missile where Shadowhawk doesn't, you know, Shadowhawk's only other one that throws out that that ability, uh, left side torso. Now you've got ones that have arm mounts and torso mounts and dual torso as well. Uh, dual 10s, dual UAC-5s. I think dual UAC-5s plus backup weapons has been my most successful build That's on them. That's crazy fun, man. Right? On a 55 yeah. tonner, but then... yeah. I will say it's got one big flaw to it, and you just have to be wary. Is you don't turn your side torso. Oh my god, it's like well, and that's what is that what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, too? it's, the, it's the like the marauder. The yeah, it's like well, yeah. no, no, it's that side profile, slim front yeah. profile. Well, people but think it's been the side, stretched too far. I don't think so. I don't know that I agree with that. I mean, I can kind of see what they're saying when I look at other art, but the problem is, I can also see it looking like it, you know, like Alex designed it i i think it's very close to other versions um but anyway i guess that's just a subjective i think it's a good opinion. mech it comes into mwo it doesn't break anything but it gives options that you know weren't there before yeah uh, in any 55 ton mech right now uh you don't have those options to be able to do some of the loadouts you can do and that's cool um and then you know it doesn't have jump jets doesn't have ecm so it's not breaking some like balance perspective uh but uh definitely a fun mech I've seen plenty of them around, uh, so there's that. As Voodoo well. Voodoo Lou says it's supposed to be the little brother of Cauldron Born, um, and I was just going to say, it, you know, that it kind of feels like running one of those. You know, it's got the same versatility in my mind, um, and kind of the same maneuverability feeling. That's what it reminded me of. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. Let's see what else do we got going on. Um, oh, this is actually pretty cool. Now I don't know how much you would utilize it on a daily basis, but I'm actually glad it it happened uh the community portal got updated and where the community feel spotlight when yeah. Tina first uh came on she was doing the community spotlight uh pretty regularly um but that kind of fell to the wayside and so i know she's been wanting to start it up again for a long time and she did so the community spotlight is up there i know bandit b17 did an article about how to uh find you know units to join um, with probably a, a little bit of a flavor towards, uh, you know, comp scene units or whatever, but I think a really good article and I would like to see more. Um, this is a great place. If you're just looking for other websites within the community, Smurfy and, 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 and whatever you you're looking We've for. We've got, uh, uh, NGNG, Outreach, Sarna, Smurfy, Metamex, about damn time, G-Man, you fucking slacker obtaining that shit. Oh my god. Uh, MRBC, Map Strats, new player videos by Kaniyashi, Rax Armory, Lee Song. Uh, by the way, if you have never actually tried the Lee Song Mech Lab. It's awesome, man. It is, it's got more information than actually Smurfy. Now, granted, it's yeah. not as easy to use as far as just a web-based browser. But uh, you know what it reminds? It's e-fitting tool, but for Mech Wireless. Exactly. Exactly. Like that's yes. And uh, so download it. She updates it all the time. I think it's auto updates now to um, uh, snap is on there. That's another your fucking. That's not as big as your last one. Like, but you actually have coffee in that one. That's yes. That's the important. Is that, part. A, is that like a half a pot of coffee? <laughs> it's uh, it's a half of a French press. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, the the new community spotlight, Tina is kicking butt with it. You can also see who's live streaming. The the I think the top four streamers that's, are up there. That's cool. You know, you that's know what really I'd cool. love mm. for the and not just being like just for us, but just for streamers out there. I would love that like the top of the website, right below like the game store forums and stuff, had that live Twitch streams no matter what page you went to. Or that that was persistent. I think that would be freaking fantastic because there are a lot of streamers out there in the MWO community and to just get awareness of having it. I think that would be cool. I don't know if that's... Yep. Pretty cool. Yeah, no. So anywhere, anyway, check it back regularly. Um, there is, uh, let's see, a couple of community events coming up. Um, one in particular that I've been seeing a lot of news about, and that's Dane is leading another faction play event. Um, so it's the second thing on there, uh, on that... Uh, under the community spotlight, community faction play event led by Mac the Dane. Uh, he's doing another one, and uh, I I will be involved tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to dropping. try. To be so involved. Phil is going to try. So may, possibly Phil and I will both be uh, dropping with Mac the Dane and, and those guys, and uh, experiencing Operation whatever it was called. It was a hard one this time. I can't 
I don't remember what it was. Um, so, so can can we go and yes. talk about the the round You're, table and Dane and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. That's the next topic. Is as a matter of fact, the faction play round table that we just recently had. It's almost like I was Russ looking at a and Derek. I know, like you're looking at the like outline. text and words and yep. stuff. Yeah. No. Okay. So me and you had talked a lot about this. I know you have talked a lot about this. Um, during the round tables, I'm I'm totally excluded. Uh, I it, it shouldn't be about what I think. It shouldn't be about what you think. You're you're just trying to keep the the discussion going. Um, how did you think that went? And did you think that, uh, you know, w were there net positive, um, suggestions tossed out there? Uh, don't forget CK's art contest. CK, we didn't forget about it. Uh, also check out CK's art contest. Um, my feeling on the round table was that it went well. I mean, the, the main thing is just moving forward, keeping the ball rolling. If, if you're um hopes and wishes didn't happen or, or weren't brought up and again well I'll, I'll come back to this uh in this round table um that's okay Th this is the next of many continuous round tables to keep adding new features or fine-tuning it or doing whatever to make faction play a better experience for everybody um and also i wanted you know i pointed out during the the um round table but i'll point out again that just because those people were there as the quote unquote community representatives, there's plenty of people I know that they didn't represent those particular people. And like I said, during the podcast or the round table, um, we're looking at the forum posts that everybody made. We linked the forum, uh, you know, the, in fact, I already linked it so you can go there and you can, uh, give your input as well. Um, we're looking at the Reddit threads and everything for, you know, everybody, there's a million ideas out there, but we're looking for consensus. We're looking for things that are brought up uh, multiple times um, and things that make sense from a game de design perspective, you know, and so on. So it's not just those people that are representing, it's everybody. But yeah, I felt very positive. I felt good about it. And I feel uh, good about the ongoing efforts to improve faction play. Um, you know, now we're in the, the post roundtable process of Russ and the guys uh, having meetings and, and discussing what's possible and looking at everything that we've collected as far as data goes. Um, so I felt good about it. You? Um, there were a lot of good points that I liked. Um, obviously, the concern with, uh, you know, spawn camping. To me, that opens up obviously what they sort of dove into, which was instead of just focusing on just spawn camping, how about giving us the ability to spawn in other locations dynamically and have a shifting sort of fight going on then you no longer have to worry about that i do like the idea of drop pods being used instead of drop ships the initial thing can be the leopard or whatever coming in dropping them off but then just drop pods obviously a visual thing too uh the the mechs encapsulated in this thing until almost like the last second hits the ground and you're off and running then you can I, I, obviously that's a new mechanic they would have to add but also i feel like uh in the future that could add some pretty cool stuff um, one thing that um, I don't think was really mentioned, and, and this is sort of the perspective, I guess, is um, you had a lot of people that were saying, well, until you fix balance between small groups and individual pilots, like, what? how are you going to do that? And that really wasn't discussed. Um, and I think that's a totally valid criticism. Um, but like you said, it's almost like stepping stones. But that being said, how are you going to get more solo players in there? and or retain them in smaller groups. Um, I do like the idea of maybe a, a smaller window of opportunity of fights going on. I don't think that was really brought up. Um, and instead of, and this would be more or less like uh, prime time, have three prime time areas. And so instead of community warfare being 24 seven nonstop, it would be during these uh, 20, uh, you know, four hour periods during, you know, US, Oceanic and EU, everyone can participate in those times, but you only have to worry about CW possibly in that time and or maybe even invasion only, you know, uh, mode. So planets only switch hands during those times. That way the focus of the players are, hey, we don't have to be in there 24 seven, maybe, you know, I don't know, quick play, right? I mean, that's, I feel like that just never was really brought up is the, what is the drain on the player base having something that's 24-7? Well, yeah, I mean, what you just mentioned, I mean, that's all the stuff that you want to see in- Well, um, just in general, that's a, me, you know. No, I know, but let me finish. 
um, it's, a, all, you know, I've talked to you about this stuff a million times. I recognize the things, the, the points and the topics that are important to you. And, and that's what you kind of just said. That being said, I agree with most of that stuff, or, or at least on some level, we, you know, we've talked about this enough to, to know that. But again, yes, it wasn't about what I want to see in faction. Play, well, and, and that's why I was bringing it up right now instead of no, I understand that, and that's fine. The th I just want it to be clear because a few people in the community did say, "Why aren't we talking?" You know, um, I do drop faction play quite a lot. Uh, the reason why is because I don't want, in any way, for people to say that we're pushing our agenda. Um, this is a community-led effort, and if the community, you know, again, remember that the representatives that there are, were there aren't the only views that are being looked at. So if you just complain that your view is not being represented, then you don't go post somewhere like on Reddit or even better on the uh, MWO thread on the forum, then it's only your fault. Uh, you're not making yourself heard. And so really, this is a community driven effort. And I was surprised at, you know, some of their things like the spawn points. I mean, I understood it. I understood how frustrating it can be to be spawn camp because it's happened to me. I've done it to people, etc. Um, but I was just surprised that that was on the top of their list. And so, you know, I think that's what's going to happen sometimes. This whole community is very passionate and divided, you know, and, and so it just depends on who you ask. You're going to get, you could totally get a whole different perspective on what matters, what should be changed, how it should be. And that's one of the challenges of, uh, developing a game like this, I, I feel. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm all for like. My personal feeling as far as faction play, uh, I have a really hard time with, you know, the solo players in there. I, um, I don't feel, you know, it, in my perfect world, it wouldn't be for solo players. That's not a slight on people, on solo players and, and um, wanting to play faction play solo. I do it because I want to get a perspective on what it feels like. But I feel like in my, again, my perfect world, um, faction play would be groups only. Um, if you're going to have a group queue, then I would limit it. And, uh, you know, this This also goes to quick play. But, you know, you and I both kind of feel like you got to limit it at four or something like that because you're just going to get better matchmaking. You, I understand, again, people that have six friends, seven friends, 12 friends, and they love doing the groups. I totally freaking get that. Um, I don't need to, you know, the game is the way you want it right now. You can play, you know, six to 12 people, whatever. Um, but I feel like we'd get better matchmaking if we limited groups to uh, to four. Um, and there's reasons why other games do that. Uh, it does help matchmaking. And then, yeah, you know, the, the faction play 24 hours versus, you know, t a window of opportunity oh. or whatever. That's what I'm used to from World of Tanks. And I could see that being beneficial as well. But, and but, I feel uh, like this is the, the topics that sort of divide bit. the community, which is... Yeah, that's the, a lot The of whole them. idea is, okay, hey, we want a, 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 a faction play that incorporates everyone. Well, as soon as you say that, you then have to look at it for what it is. If if you're having groups that need the mortar that is solo players, right, to fill in the gaps, well, then you have to recognize that the experience the, these individual and or small groups have isn't always going to be a net positive, right? But then you saying that we want to keep that experience, we want this all-encompassing thing, but we, and that's where I feel like the 24-7 uh, just sort of grind you have to be on all the time is an issue. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I, I think these are steps in the right direction. The people that are involved right now uh, and the, the faction play discussion roundtable that we just had, great suggestions. My issue is, and I brought this up to you, is the everyman. How do you get someone like myself or how do you get someone that doesn't want that experience how do you draw them back into the the you know game and right now i i feel like some of the discussions that have happened have been centered around people that are currently playing and like the system not the i would say uh numbers out there that are not playing and i feel like until that really gets resolved i think uh we'll just keep having these discussions so and and so my again my perspective is when you say how do you get them every man into faction play and this is me being a hard ass you know and again i'm not meaning to slight anybody by this or anybody's experience but i feel like that potentially um 
faction play isn't for the everyman, just like Clan Wars and World of Tanks wasn't for everyone. Uh, that's what quick play is for. That's for the everyman. Um, of course, if we could get more people into faction play, that's good for business. It's good for the people playing faction play. And yes, we need to have more draw to faction play. Faction play needs to improve significantly, become more, you know, more fun to play uh, on an ongoing basis, on a regular basis um, to draw more people in. But I still feel like it's not necessarily to draw the every man in. It's to draw the people that are looking for something a little bit deeper than quick play. Um, and, you know, that would hopefully have some lore mixed in and would have, um, you know, just a, a added layers upon the quick play experience. And that's what it, that's who it would be for people that are looking for more. Well, quick and, play and, and I totally agree. But again, it goes back to that. Um, if you have a system that you're saying we want to incorporate everyone. But as soon as you're you're saying that you have to deal with the consequences. Exactly. Right. We, we, so it, it is trying do to... we as a whole and a collective and that's where you know unfortunately russ has to make the decision and it's not an easy one which is you know should solos be a part of quick quick play uh you have to be a part of a unit uh, you know whatever it's called nowadays well uh faction play warfare play. Uh, yeah but faction play so and then what sort of structure do you want you know uh, a 24 7 schedule where um people have to be logged on and battling and then keep in mind like you know planet side one had 24 7 365 yeah, but it was a different play. That, that's a different it was different but it could it worked and there was a way to do it and i'm not saying that applies to mwo um so i feel like there is a way to do a 24 7 thing and i feel like there's a very successful way to do uh scheduled um you know faction play a la uh world of tanks and and there's probably variations of both of those i just think it's it like when me and you have talked about it in the past one of the things with with faction play that i would have loved to see and again this is my opinion doesn't mean shit, but uh it's the fact of i would have loved to see exactly what i was sort of mentioning before which is from you know 8 30 to 9 p.m eastern to you know 1 a.m that's your window for battles kicking off for faction play right and then you'd have this uh another time zone for eu and oceanic as well that everyone can participate in but that or and even yes and no to that extent but you'd have pre-planned battles ahead of time like this just logging in I, I just feel like we want this awesome experience that has balance and matchmaking and all this but that's not what we have and if you want the freedom that we currently have, you can't have that. I don't know. I just feel like being able to log in and say, you know what? Hey, Darren, we got practice practice right before. Uh, we got a match tomorrow against freaking 228th, whoever. Um, or maybe you don't even know who it is, but you can sort of get an idea because of uh, around your territory. But you know what map it's going to be. You know what restrictions they already have. Um, and you know tonnage and stuff. So you can pre-plan ahead of time. And then what? We have a match at 9 p.m. Eastern. We kick it off. We have a fight. We have one or two more. And then we're done. And it could be attacking. It could be defending. It could be an invasion or whatever. And then we're done for the rest of the night. We don't... It's not this, like, always going on faction play that just, you know, the grind is real. Um, and then what? The next day, uh, your, and your commanders, or whoever is a part of your unit, assigns which attacks or defending, however many... It's a la world of tanks sort of style i just feel like that that makes sense to me instead of having this so yes you could still have a top tier unit engage a lower tier unit but it's not over and over and over in one night it, you know what i'm saying like and you wouldn't be having solo players dropping against remade cues i don't know Am I, am I yeah, on an and, island? And i don't know people are talking about you know like first of all i understand the differences between you know planet side and and world of tanks and mechware online you know i've played all these games extensively um and i'm not saying don't bring up the differences but i totally get that i'm just saying there's a lot of models out there to look at and examine and and figure out you know what ultimately we want for mwo um you know i just yeah i don't <laughs> there's a lot of opinions a lot of uh ideas but, okay, and hopefully keep... we can just keep taking it in a direction where it gets more fun. People are also, I think a big issue is population. Um, keep in mind, like myself, uh, coming from a marketing standpoint, um, I've almost, there's almost been zero marketing driving people to community warfare. Um, in fact, I 
almost keep people away when I'm talking to YouTubers, Twitch streamers, and so forth. I pretty much, you know, I'll give them an idea of what faction play is like right now and kind of a vision for what it could be in the future. But I typically recommend kind of staying away from it right now. Um, and so it's almost anti-marketing uh, because I don't want to drive people there until it's at a point where it's really fun and it's, engaging. I just and feel when it like, gets to that point, I'm going to push the shit out of it. We're I just feel market, like no one really wants crazy. to just basically say things have to change from where they currently are because if the current system and everything was working, we wouldn't be having this discussion in the first place. Right? And to like to someone just said in chat, the issue with scheduled matches is yet another wall for people to get into faction play. I don't actually think that's true uh, at all. You would have a unit. You would have to join a unit to be able to participate. You would know how many battles you have per night, whether it's attack, defense, whatever. And then you're done. If anything, that's so much easier than uh, not knowing or whatever, getting mixed groups and solos together. Uh, let's see. Another is a uh, PSR system. That has nothing to do with um, faction play, and it shouldn't. Uh, you're going to have top units out there competing against lower units. That's always going to happen in faction play. There is no PSR or matchmaking. Um, let's see. What was... Uh, if I wanted to do scheduled matches, I'd sign up for community-run matches. I, I don't even know really how to respond to that. Because, like... if the Like I said, if the current system was working... Right, and and it was bringing in your everyman, and your everyman wants to participate. Uh, but if I drop solo, or if I drop in a small group, and I'm just running into a wall, and again, there, there's multiple things here. Um, me and you have talked about it. I don't think solo should be a part of the experience, or <laughs> if you do have solos, they should not be thrust into matches with groups. But going back to what I was saying is, if you have if you have matches already pre-match scheduled. You know ahead of time, 24 hours, 48 hours ahead of time, that you have a match at 9, 10, and 11. You don't have to worry about having solos in your matches anymore, right? You don't have to worry about having mixed groups in your matches anymore. It would be, uh, you know, 4th Donald go guards uh, dropping against 228, and that would be your match. Now, granted, yeah, you may have uh, Lords versus, you know, regular Joe Schmo unit, and they get wrecked, but that's okay. Like, that's the whole point. Um, you would just, you can't have everything. Like, that's what I feel like. No one really, you can't, you want matchmaking, you want, you want rules, you want restrictions, but then you want the freedom of the system. And that's just, you just can't have it all. Yeah. And so that's the difficulty of this whole topic, you know, and, and why we're having roundtables and having people, the, you know, the roundtable went three hours or whatever, lots of discussion. Um, so, you know, it's a tough one and I just hope it keeps moving in a positive direction we we, and... we we have very select few games out there that are very what when faction play first came out there was only one really other game that was doing something similar and that was world of tank style right you participated in clan wars right you enjoyed it yes but, absolutely and again i just don't know and this is what's tough you've got thousands of players out there that all want different things Obviously, you can't do all that. So the decisions just have to come down to uh, should solos be a part of it or should groups and how to all that. Dude, chat's rioting about everything you're talking about. Yeah, like I said, I don't... But then they're going to be like, well, then, you know, how do you fix it? Well, yeah, well... It, it, it's... it's. This is our community, man. We just got to work with it. But anyway... If you did miss the uh, the Faction Play Roundtable, uh, I'm going to drop a link in chat uh, for the YouTube video. It's up on YouTube. It's also on SoundCloud. So if you listen to us on podcast, it's on that uh, playlist now. You should have it. But anyway, here it is on YouTube. What are we talking about? The Faction Play meeting. Oh, gotcha. Um, so if you want to hear the discussion, you can also follow along uh, on the forums and so forth and contribute. Uh, put your opinion in there. Your opinion does matter. No, and, uh, I mean, what we're talking about, uh, Bear Claw's asking questions, so let, let me uh -huh. just clarify. And maybe someone's coming in here and they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Faction play, in my eyes, would work like this. You have a map. Everybody right? gets into Phil's every, eyes. and every, <laughs> Everybody has to join a unit, 
right? There are no solo players anymore, right? But that doesn't mean you as a pilot can't actually drop in a match against others by yourself. If you've never played World of Tanks, it'd be very similar to that. How do you choose who you attack and who you defend? That would be based on how many territories you have, your strength, all that, blah, blah, blah on the map. But you, your commanders would do that a few days ahead of time. It, it could be adjoining territories or whatever. You'd have resources out there. Um, so you'd want to go after planets. But how it would work is you'd log in, right? And every single night, depending, you may have an attack, a defense, an attack, but you'd only have a handful. You may even have only one faction play match that night. You would know what map it's going to be. You know any restrictions it's going to have. You would know anything about, but possibly you wouldn't know who it is, except for if you know, depending the territories around you, but then you could create cool rules too, where there's specialties where you could do like double jumps or whatever. And you would play your match. It would, you just drop like normal, right? You get done, you win, you lose, or you tie, and then you'd be done for the rest of the night. Then you'd go back to either practicing in private matches and or you go back to the quick play queue. The issue that we have is we have a 24, and this is my issue with it. So I guess, let me just clarify that. As you point out, Darren, it's my issue. But I feel like my issues are also valid. <laughs> Says everyone out there. Says everyone, that's what I say, yeah. It, here's the thing. We have a 24-7 window that's trying to cater to battles going on anytime, any place, all the time with solos and groups. The issue is, right, we can do really well for four hours, but then once we log off, our effort and stuff means jack shit, right? But then Oceanic or whatever time zone may be really strong, and for whatever reason, they're able to take over or whatever. We already sort of have this, this windows of engagement as is. I'm just saying that if we change the entire way faction play, I think it would be less grindy for people. Yes, some of you guys uh, out there admit uh, that's not for casual players. How would casual players, you'd have to have a tier system. No, you wouldn't. You don't have matchmaking currently and, uh, <laughs> and you're okay with that. Um, you would just log on, you'd get your shit done and you'd move on to the next day. Yeah, uh, I mean, and so that's one option. Um... You know, it's 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 interesting. We obviously there's different ways you can approach this. There's different... The current system doesn't work. Well, it's it's not there yet. Whether it works or not, it's not fun enough for people to maintain. I feel like people jump but, in, play it. But fun they... fun is subjective. So even what I'm uh, even what I'm talking about may not actually be fun to some players. All I'm saying is it's a system that that basically says that works uh, somewhere else. But yeah, and it basically removes the imbalances between having solos and groups or whatever. Yeah. It removes the need to be online twenty four seven, you know, and you concentrate your efforts on this, you know, little time window. You get done and you move on, and you earn your C bills. And but and obviously, as happy as that would make some people, it would equally make other people unhappy. Um, you know, but, and, but and, isn't and that and the problem? Up... Isn't that the problem? Life though is basically saying. Yeah, oh, we, had, we just nothing. have to, you know, we got to yeah. everybody if you try and make everybody happy. You right. Come up Here's with a trophy a kid. Product. You know, it, that's what I'm saying is like no but one that's... out there has basically laid out a plan of saying this is where faction play should go in the current state. And this is how we could get there. No, no one's done that. Like in a written form, diagrams, all that shit. No one's done that. So right now, it just sort of seems like here, here's ideas to make it better. But those ideas are for people that are currently participating and they don't do anything for people on the outside looking in They're saying, hey, I don't play because of all these issues. Then on the flip side, no one's even really suggested a whole template for, hey, this is what it could be. But it's a pretty big departure from where we're currently at. I think we've been gathering a lot of information about from faction play current faction play players in other words the, you know the the community representatives the people that have been posting on the forums and reddit so we're getting in feedback from people that are playing and they're telling us what they want to see more of or to change in order to make it more engaging for them but like you brought up the everyman sula brought up he says question to chat what's the top things that keep you from playing faction play i do agree that those are equally important questions um, I feel like we need to kind of pull both groups. We need to pull the people that are playing it and say what's going to keep you playing it and, and love it even more. And then we need to pull the people that aren't playing it and say why aren't you playing it? Um, now, 
that being said, there might be reasons that ultimately that people that aren't playing it, they're just not going to play it. No matter, you know, unless you turn it into basically quick play, which is what they play now and that's what they like, they're not going to play it. So there's, you know, there's oh, sometimes and there's I would, people that and I would are remove just not going to get in. And I know this, some people enjoy it. I'd remove Invasion Game Mode completely. I think uh, uh, it should just be settled over the regular matches with Respawn, sure. That's cool. A lot of people have seen, actually, out of all the changes, and really Invasion wasn't changed at all. The long times were removed. So for all the people that don't like Invasion Game Mode, it's been refreshing for the respawn, right? Regular maps. Uh, and again, I just feel like tough decisions have to be made to basically either patch up the ship you're currently in, right? And keep it afloat and keep people that are on it happy. Or do you want to go a Abandoned different direction? Ship. I don't, and that's not, that's not a slay. That's not, that's just no, the reality. Yeah. Are you, are you going to throw good money after bad or is it salvageable? Is it something that we can you know, is it still a lump of clay that we can turn into a masterpiece? Um, I don't know. You know, again, it's difficult because I have in my head what I think would be make it perfect. I could lay out my whole plan, and and I personally think this would make faction play perfect. It would make it stand out from you know uh, quick play. Um, but I don't know that my perspective and the things that I enjoy in a game are what would uh impact the masses the most and 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 make the most you know the majority of the players um have fun with the setup so it's all it's, i think it is tough because you get these passionate people in and like i said you can just they're totally opposite well, ends it, of the and again just sort of looking at chat i mean it's sort of a, a a good pool of people to where you have so many different opinions someone's like oh yeah that sounds like a great idea then you have someone like oh i hate it no you can't like there's compromise, but I think sometimes the current system is it is just freedom of choice way too much. And I mean, it, let's be honest here. I mean, yes, we have seen a, a shift from community warfare as it first was labeled, and it's been moving along here, and the changes have been going in. But I just feel that, for me at least, from the competitive... And I look back to um, uh, Mech Word 4. Right. And MechWare Living Legends, when I met you, we were doing competitive matches, right? And some of the units that are out there, whether you're playing an MRBC, NBT, uh, Arhod, any of these things going on, right? Like, you know, building up to a match that you you were, you you were you knew, hey, we were, we're fighting freaking X unit. And so, you know, hey, we got to go in with the game plan. We got to go in watching the tournament, you know, in up in Vancouver. They go in with the plan. Well... I just don't feel like that that type of build up and hype and stuff for faction play is even there with that because you're dropping you don't you know what i'm saying like it's just that whether it's i don't know if it's sort of like a tournament feel um i don't know like i said i i would i would change things up but then again it's not my i have all the answers but i'm gonna bottle them up inside and not share them <laughs> anyway uh yeah Go check out the Faction Play meeting on YouTube. Check it out uh, on our podcast um, and participate. There'll be more meetings and uh, future discussions. And maybe the discussion at some point will turn into, um, you know, I want, is, is there you know something what, greater you know the we shit, can do? You know the shit part about it is I want to participate every single day in CW. But until solos are either removed, like until there's a big change, I, like I can't. I will not drop when there's solos and groups and or smaller groups and big groups and all this. And it's just like it, the balance factor. And I'm not saying there has to be balance for PSR matchmaking balance there. there that is a big difference there. I'm not asking for PSR, but the balance factor, it, I just, I, I, I just can't get behind that. So. Yeah. All right. We're going to move on to the next section the next subject matter and that is harebrained schemes in the battletech game which most of you know uh will be coming out for the backer beta soon it should be uh this month next month something like that uh just you around won. the corner yeah so uh so this is a big announcement phil you were saying you wanted to make this one right oh am i gonna make it yeah well we'll talk about uh the big one before we talk about the gear but uh yeah let's uh let's get into it 
we got some good news. We got some exciting news. We've been in some meetings with um, Mitch up at Harebrain. Yep. So things are changing. HPG on uh, Penny Arcade have uh, teamed up, um, and of course that means uh, time constraints and stuff like that. And so one of the things that uh, Mitch did is he reached out to us, and we've obviously had a professional relationship uh, helping him with the Kickstarter and a lot of the Q and A's and stuff back then. And uh, basically, um, they're going to be doing their Battletech Q&A sessions on NGNG TV. So uh, that's going to be kicking off actually February 8th next week, uh, right here. Uh, and it is at, uh, I think, what, 12 p.m. their time, PST? Or yeah, one, I think it's one... uh, noon Pacific. Okay. But yeah, basically, like Phil was saying, uh, since uh, Hyper RPG moved into the Penny Arcade studios, um, they're sharing studios now, and so their time schedules, you know, that aren't as open as they were before, because um, Penny Arcade uses studios, Hyper RPG uses studio, and so for logistical reasons, they're just not able to do their Q and A there anymore. Um, so we are going to be the official hosts of the BattleTech Q and A sessions with Mitch, and it's usually like Jordan's son and and maybe Tyler or other uh, guests on there. Um, it's going to be the same format, so we're not going to be like hosting it per se. Um, it was beyond the channel. Like we're not going to be there. Yep. You're not going to hear our voices. They're going to be streaming directly from the uh, Hairbrain Schemes offices. Um, so it'll be crystal clear audio. You know, as, as long as they set it up correctly, which they will do. Um, and uh, you know, it, so basically, same of what you've been seeing first Wednesday of every month, uh, and we'll have the BattleTech Q and As here. Yep. on NGNG TV. And then of course that all, you know and we've talked to them about um, doing some other stuff with them either podcasts like this. Uh, one of the one things that we pointed out was uh, we've had some audio quality issues in the past. What? Pale Bear's commentary is just uh, uh, cracking me up. He is tonight. hilarious Sorry. isn't he? Yeah, um, he's good. But uh, yeah so you guys uh, will be receiving delicious sweet mech porn information here uh which and this you know yeah. the q a the q a's are going to go on indefinitely through the the um development of the game obviously and there will probably be some specials where phil and i will have you know interview them and and so forth um but also this is going to lead directly into us streaming battletech on ngh tv on a regular basis so uh lots more battletech in 2017 in, so, in various ways as i pointed out when we can play and stream Battletech the game. I will be naming the subs of our channel as my mech warriors. Some of you guys aren't going to make it. I, <laughs> you need to prepare yourself. Is this like the XCOM Mentally, thing? Mentally, physically. I'm already like, I'm already like compartmentalizing what I'm going to have to do as a commander. I mean, writing the letters to your wives and children and, but I'm okay with your sacrifice. So, um, you know, make it a good, you know, honorable, fun death. I mean, you know. I, uh, I hope Zoof gets legged. <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm super <laughs> excited uh, for this game. And seriously, like, I mean, yeah. we had this excitement five years ago when we were waiting for what we knew was going to be even a less spectacular game, but we still wanted to do it anyway when tactics was coming about. So like, we've kind of been waiting for this opportunity for a long time. And now it's only better because it's Battletech and Mitch and Jordan. Um, yeah, we finally have like, you know, our turn based, it's still not, it's still not a 3d version of mega mech. And maybe someday we will get that, but, uh, it's going to be freaking awesome. And yeah. talking with the guys, you know, we've been having meetings well, with them. And I got to this. I got to play it up at, um, Vancouver, yes. obviously it's still that old build that they had. Um, and a part of me, you know, wanted a new mech commander. Sure. But when I played it, what was interesting because, because of how the turn phase and attack phase works and it wasn't mega mech, right? It wasn't, uh, what we'd seen before with mech war tactics. Uh, you know, it, to me, it actually felt like a really cool blend of, the original tabletop and the mech commander experience just like you know and it was just really enjoyable and just yeah like guys oh i'm super excited um i've already totally worn, i've already warned the wife that there will be long nights with me streaming it's gonna it's happen. gonna be good yeah, yeah so that's what i was getting at, at the beginning of the podcast um we've got a lot of stuff 
coming this year that is just going to increase the need for continuous podcasts and discussion and streams and, and growing. You, you, you know what's another cool aspect, Darren? Um, and recently I've been playing, and I actually streamed this last week uh, right here, uh, as a game um, called Halcyon Your 6. Space game? Yeah. Yes, Base Commander. You want to talk about a fucking addicting ass genre type of games. It's like FTL and XCOM had a baby. And by the way, if we had a Battletech version of this, crack. Crack, cocaine. I've never done them, but I would assume <laughs> it would be like that. Uh, it is... And, and my point being to this is the actual interaction between us and the chat, right? The streamer and the chat being able to say, hey, uh, sub, you're, you know, you're, you're naming, uh, you know, you're commander of my ship now. What ship would you like? To me, as a streamer, that's really cool. Like, you can't necessarily do that with MWO all the time, right? And for now, we're going to be moving and playing Battletech the game when it comes out. And to be able to to name a mech or for a pilot out there who watches and comes here, you know, to have that sort of connection. I don't know. It's just really cool. Like, so stick wants to know what the name of the game is. You're talking about, uh, was it a uh, Halcyon six base yeah. commander? <laughs> like he plays it and he's addicted to it and can't remember the oh, name. Opie started. Ch check Opie. it out. Opie. Thanks. Opie. Uh, on steam, I guess, yes. uh, addictive game. If you like space turn based shit, um, and I'm, I guess they could probably see you stream it on the weekends here or whatever. Oh my God. It's so addictive. Yes. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's a big thing for us. We're very excited about it. We're going to be working much more closely with hyper RPG. In yep. fact, I have to, I have a meeting sitting with them. right there, right there is your jacket. Hyper I, RPG I, I have a fill a flight jacket because you know, we're official mech warriors for them now. I, uh, I have a meeting. To help set up stuff tomorrow so that's yes it. we we, we will be so anyway guys it's it's it's, a little, a little, it's exciting uh lots of lots of new stuff happening with hyper are you, RPG. are you guys you know dude hopefully catalyst we've well. got like has, has this sunk in have you taken a moment we have Every day mechware online it's continued development oh and they just you're just repeating what i said at uh metcon dude 36 I, already, I, already oh, said I know but 36 he, he just ju I know but he just timeline jump 3068 you heard 30, Russ 68. right Bam. um uh, I've been seeing the mech porn behind the scenes you guys you guys you don't even know, you don't even know oh my god um I can't handle it anymore how do you turn off the freaking notifications on TeamSpeak it's driving me crazy go up to self and like why it, did this all of a sudden turn itself on I don't know cuz you're old like self sound pack sounds deactivated. I have that. Oh, well, then... they they wait. Sounds deactivated. They moved it. It used to be the bottom option. That's what happened. Mine hasn't changed. You All done. Right, you go. done. Fucked up. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we've got. Uh, Excuse me. Excuse me. Mech Online, BattleTech the game, and I don't think it's crazy to say, from a marketing and PR standpoint. How crafty HBS is doing what they did coming in at the time frame they did. Because you know how many expansions did they do for um, Shadowrun. Just think about that for a second, guys. Not only are they coming around the 30, what, 15, 30, 20, I think it's 30, 15, 30, 25. I forgot which one. Basically, it allows... Wait, what are you talking about? MW5? No, no, no. Um, HBS with Battletech the game. Oh, They're coming yeah. in pre-succession war. I'm pretty sure it's 3015. Uh, pre-succession wars. They could do no, an expansion. 3025. Uh, MW5 is 3015. Oh, okay. Sorry. Getting confused. So many things. Get your dates together, man. Oh, flipping idiot. I may be God. Able to. I don't know. But, but I mean, anyway. the ability for them to do a succession wars expansion and even a pre-date game. They could technically do a pre Sort of like Randall Bill saying, hey, new novels, but instead of it oh, being oh, current oh, time frame, what if Battletech HBS said, you know, hey, we're going to do a, you know, pre-3000 uh, time frame, you know, Star yes. League era or whatever. Um, and then, of course, it allows them to do like a clan expansion to, from a marketing standpoint, pretty smart. Yeah. Pretty smart. And then. So good shit. 
MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries. And um, I know it's evil to say this, but I'm so looking forward to just totally, like, teasing you guys about it. And, you know, is that, is that wrong of me? Dick, man. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of more teasing, although I hope, it, I hope this uh, fulfills itself in the end. Uh, BattletechGear.com, they've launched the next round of merchandise. They're keeping it a little bit more simple this time. There's a Stein and there is a coaster set for your Stein. That's you very can set simple. set your Stein on the coasters. Um, the Stein goes for 40 bucks. The coasters go for 20 Minimum order on I both is 1000 this time. So oh, Did the uh, minimum orders? Yeah, they're up. Yep. Okay. Um, this is going till March 1st, so we got still a month and we're... Already at three twenty six on the steins. I haven't ordered mine yet, but I'm going to get a stein and I'm going to get the coasters. They'll, they'll meet. Yeah. They'll meet this goal. Yeah, I do feel like they're going to meet this goal. Um, obviously, they were dipping their toes in the water, and maybe it was a bit chilly last time. It's warming up. Hopefully, we'll get these well, these products shipped, and we'll continue. I want to see more product coming from uh, Hairbrained and, and the BattletechGear.com site. But these look pretty cool. I was looking at the coasters and um, very retro. I like it. Yeah. I love that. Uh, it's kind of like World War II style yep. uh, nose art or whatever or propaganda. Legend Killer, you got the Legend Killer in there, of course. And you know, I don't, I don't know if there's a specific reference, but obviously she's blowing out shells. Legend Killer is a, uh, a rifleman. Braden Norton. So be, yes. Bl- yes. There is actual ballistics. stuff. Yep. And then you've got the Irby. Hell yeah! Right, taking out the trash. Um, it's nose art of Orlando Perez, the 3013 Solaris 7 nice. Grand Champion, famous for being the only mechware to pilot an urban mech to the championship. Yep. Gemini Stables, and you've got uh, Mad Cat there. I like that one. Um, Silver Dragon Stables, and Kosh. Is it Kosh? I assume it's Kosh. Anyway, some cool, uh, some cool merchandise. Please give them your support. Uh, if the if these campaigns are successful, then they're only going to continue. We're going to be able to fill our rooms and our man caves and uh, piss off our wives with all of this cool BattleTech gear showing up around the house. Think about it. In a year from now, we could have all kinds of new swag that never existed before. Uh, there's never been enough BattleTech merchandise out there. Well, I'm a little disappointed I can't rock out my Timberwolf uh, t-shirt. Me but too. Me I, too. You know, like I said last time, I think if it would have been... Hey, you can buy this banner and a t-shirt, you know, combo. I think those would have made pre-order easily. The problem was I'm not going to pay $80 for four banners that I don't care about. You know, and and I unfortunately I think that's just the reality of where where it was. And then the Atlas is awesome, but not everybody has that type type Not of within cash. everybody's reach, but it was freaking awesome. I would have been proud to own one. Um, and hopefully that option does come up again. I don't know if it's always going to be minimum orders. Potentially it will be, um, you know, and maybe they can do that, the, 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 os- or the uh, Atlas at a lower, not, a, not necessarily a lower price level, but a, a minimum order. Because there were quite a lot of people that did want to get think, that. I think the price was totally 100% justifiable. Absolutely. I just feel that the pre-order amounts... Was a little bit up there. Yeah, I mean, if you would have shot for like 250 they would have probably met that. Right, but uh, and I get it, you know, from a possibly a print standpoint, uh, and I, I think that's why the banners were set up the way they did as well, um, because you got to pay for screen printing and all that, blah blah blah. So it is because you know if Liao would have had like two orders, you're still having to pay for that to be, you know, a print a screen, a screen, a screen, a screen to be made and all that. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. I like the designs they had for the uh, the houses and uh, the clans obviously some of them you know were a little bit different well here's to seeing some of those come up again right uh we got anything else mwo or BattleTech related um off the top of my head we've been going an hour Dude, so i'm gonna I, we are gonna i had here. one of the most epic matches yesterday. oh yeah yeah uh okay what was it i um i was in a spirit bear oh by the way i've been working on mastering my hero max all of them. So I've got the majority of my mediums actually done. I only have like three left. Um, I've sort of jumped up to assaults because, you know, I don't play assault as much. So, and I've been letting people vote for which one I'm going to do next. Well, the, I've uh, rocked out the La Malenche. By the way, two, pe- 
two ER peep goss on the La Malenche with a standard 360 is fantastic. Uh, low slung arms, though. But uh, I was in a spirit bear last night. And um, I turned into ninja bear. I literally snuck up behind a hellbringer. And then one shot a fire starter. Black? No. And then destroyed a Highlander 2C. And then destroyed a mad dog. And then from behind them oh my god no it was and it was funny because uh someone was on the other uh team that uh was in chat afterwards and they were like no one fucking listens i was like warning them no one listens and i was like like and I, I like stepped up and i was like please don't have seismic sensor please don't have seismic sensor and i was just like don't turn around turn around and it was just little ninja bear i feel like i made bear claw proud uh, you know, like he, he said, yes, yes, you're, you're one of us now. I don't know. But anyways, or Dallas was the one he's in chat. <laughs> he's like, it was so bad. No. Um, but anyways, I'll, Somebody, I'll put that up on YouTube. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds great. like a good match. Um, a good match. Somebody's asking where they can get the, uh, Battletech tabletop. I would, my guess is Amazon, although I know they've been out of it sometimes. Um, uh, the new one, Catalyst Game Labs, don't they have a... Uh... Yeah, you can go to the Catalyst Game Lab store. Um, if you do go to Amazon, be sure to go to NoGutsNoGalaxy.net first and click on the Amazon button. Just saying, but yeah, go to Catalyst Game Labs. They do have a store. Just uh, Google Catalyst Game Labs and, and store or whatever. Or you'll use find the it. Amazon affiliate link down below the stream. Or use the Amazon affiliate link. Yes. Anyway, but go to Catalyst. If Catalyst has it for sale, absolutely 100% support Catalyst. Number one, give them all of your money instead of uh, going through, uh, you know, someone else. But anyway, that's hopefully where you can get it. I'm trying to but find it for someone. It for MWO and BattleTech tonight. Uh, just a little announcement: If there's anybody out there in the community, and I know there's a few of you um, that like to play Arma or different Arma mods, um, I did just recently set up an Arma Three Exile server. Um, if any of you out there have played DayZ or Altus Life or various mods, it's, it's something along the lines of that. Um, it's open to the community. You can just download the A3 launcher. You can Google that A3 launcher. I'll drop the link in here when I'm done talking. Uh, and you can search for the NGNG server on the server list. Once you find the server, it will then download all the necessary mods for you to get on. And then you can just jump onto the server and play. And it's going to be, you know, mostly this community, maybe maybe a little bit of side strafes community. For the most part, we're going to try and keep it to friendly people within the Battletech community. And in fact, I am going to be working with a mission designer, uh, creator. And I'm my ultimate goal with this is to make this essentially a Battletech themed uh, exile server, um, which means I'm going to be changing, you know, all the, the text and the names for NPCs and missions, and it's all going to have some sort of battle tech theme. That's my ultimate vision for this. We did just get the server live, um, so there's going to be some uh, modding, and it's going to take some time to get it to perhaps what this vision I have is. But just if you feel like playing a first-person shooter other than MWO, still want to play with your friends, uh, check it out. Zoof's on there with us. Uh, Rich in chat is on Side there with strafe. us. Side strafe has been playing with us. If you've ever uh, want to shoot Darren in the face... That is your opportunity. So, uh, yeah, just uh, throwing that out there if you'd like to check it out. All right. And, so we uh, did we did find that yeah. link for people for it's for those that are listening at store.catalystgamelabs.com. Um, there's that. It, it actually doesn't look like they have any in stock. I know last time when Randall was on, they didn't have any in stock. So yeah, so we'll we'll talk to him about that and ask him what the best uh, alternate method for getting it is. Um, there is the link to A3 Launcher if anybody wants to join us. And that is it, Phil. Yeah, I'm just checking to see if Amazon had any in I stock. It didn't seem like it. Oh yeah, they do. It's only. Oh, they do. <laughs> uh, well, be sure. To check to click our Amazon link below here, but then yeah, I Hold guess it's on. on Amazon. It's like two hundred ninety nine dollars. Yeah, don't oh, well, buy it. That's realistic. Yeah, that's from that's what happens when there's none on there. Oh my that's god! That's like when you see the novel that you want and it's four hundred dollars. You can get like but, one of the but, original but, box sets for less. Like, yeah. So we're you know what we're gonna hit up Randall and let him know that people are looking to <gasps> buy the tabletop. In fact, 
I'm wanting to update and buy a new version of the tabletop, so um, I've been meaning to ask that anyway. About a month ago, I did go out there looking for it, and I couldn't find it either. Darren? Yes? You know what? What? Oh, we still have one to give away? Right, tell me how much you uh, you love me. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Phil has a whole box of stuff from... Uh... Dude, I didn't even realize I still had... Battletech introductory box set right here, still in the plastic. It's all shiny and chrome. Guys, we, uh, we actually only have one of this, but we have a shitload of stuff. Um, remember when we they need sent to start us those giveaways again? Yeah, right? I remember when they sent us like a whole box? I didn't realize because I'd moved and it was in a plastic box. Yep, which is fucking heavy, by the way. Um, so. What that means, guys, is we are going to start up. Uh, 2017 is going to be another year of Catalyst giveaways. We kind of stopped doing the giveaways, and they've just been sitting there uh, waiting for you guys again. Um, so th we do have. I could easily say right now, I want that box set. You're not going to get and it I though. Do, I'm not sending but it. But we're going to we're going to give it to you. You guys are going to be the beneficiaries of this gold mine of Catalyst uh, stuff that we have sitting at Phil's. So. Oh, you know Phil's what I also been, have? Phil's been itching to ship stuff again ever since we moved our store to Amazon. So this is going to be his opportunity to shift you. 25 years of art and fiction. I also, yeah. have, I don't have much actually. I think the rest are like map um, little uh, Yeah, but which we can things. give those away too. We can give those away as well. The map packs and stuff you like that. You get a map pack. He gets a and map pack. Everyone gets a we'll map do, pack. If we are working with uh, Randall on a monthly basis, like he brought up, and like I think we should be, uh, we'll get some more stuff. So I'm going to pretty much say, yeah, there's going to be some good giveaways this year. Um, so look forward to that. I didn't realize I had had it, and uh, me and the wife were clearing out our uh, spare uh, bedroom. Um, since I moved, we haven't been in that, that closet. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, guess what I still have? So... Uh, there, there you yeah, guys so go. Yeah, so we, we did that when we weren't working quite as full-time with uh, PGI. When we started working more and more uh, behind the scenes with PGI, we just had less and less time to do things. So that basically got delayed. But don't worry. It's there, and it's going to get out to you guys. Um, so we will we'll do a little bit of uh, inventory, what we have, and we'll figure out ways to give those away for sure. Yeah. Uh, 2018, those are not going to be sitting in Phil's house, I promise. Nope. I'll make sure to uh, get these out. Um, well, I'll, I'll do an inventory, get you the list, and then we'll go from there. We'll come up with a creative way for uh, giveaways. Um, Pale Bear says, do all giveaways come with a signed Phil headshot? Well, as a matter of fact, um, for Metcon, we got a bunch of postcards made that have a Phil headshot and a Darren headshot on the back. Um, and they are going to be, I, I'd say we have probably at least a couple hundred of them. Um, and yeah, they are going to go out with orders. Anything that where we are sending anything to anybody, there's going to one of those is going to go with it, and it will be signed by Phil and myself. So there you go, Pale Bear. Hope and you then win. I'll make sure to, you know, put some love on it for you. Yeah, he, he'll. Uh, <laughs> ew, but yeah, he'll. What, I was gonna, you know, like, smell a little bit of uh, Phil's perfume on it as well. You know. <laughs> Just gonna give it a what kiss. Do you have to, what do you have to win to get the Darren part removed? Uh, just, just scissors, I guess. Yeah. Um, that'll do it. All right, Phil, take us out. Guys, I just want to say thank you again. Uh, make sure to uh, check out our website, NoGutsNoGalaxy.net. By the way, uh, when Darren, I'm looking at you, kid, uh, get some uh, information to uh, <clears throat> Adam, we will have a new front page of NoGutsNoGalaxy.net. So when Darren. He's like, shut up, Phil. Um, make sure to check that, of course. What are you on... talking about? I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> this is our relationship. Uh, are we serious or are you just fucking with me? Because if no. you're just fucking. Okay. <laughs> I was just like. I talk to Adam oh. every night because he's been streaming every night. Oh, so He has it. He's probably here in chat. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's literally. The website's been ready for like four months and we've just been waiting on a well, paragraph from Darren. But, you know. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Take Make sure to check man. it out on uh, YouTube at No Guts No Galaxy TV, Twitter at No Guts No Galaxy, and Facebook at No Guts No Galaxy Podcast, SoundCloud at No Guts No Galaxy, and all the other latest and greatest mech porn t-shirts. Be sure to check out No Guts No Galaxy Store.com. By the way, all that information is down below. And did you know you can also support our channel 
a few ways. One, you can buy items off Amazon using our affiliate link down below. So maybe you order stuff all the time. If you just click that and then do your normal purchasing, yeah, it helps us out. Uh, you can uh, become a sub to the channel. There's information down below. You get access to emoticons. Slow-mo doesn't affect you. So during the round table, when it's like a minute slow time, you can just be like, no, I'm going to talk anyways. Uh, you have access to that. And uh, then you can spam uh, beard emotes. You can do that as well. Maybe with a thumbs up here or there, you know. Um, and of course, if uh, you want to support us a little bit further, just hanging out and chat. Just that, to me, that's the biggest thing. Um, and of course, don't forget, we are sponsored by Nix Jerky. Just go to nixjerky.com. If you use the promo code NGNG, you get 5% off your order. And I don't know about you, dude, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You finally got yours. I got mine. I've already, yes. I've already eaten all the garlic. I have two pieces left okay. of garlic uh, pepper. Like, dude, I can't. Our, my house demolished the brown sugar. Um, just so everybody knows out there, it's not too sweet. It's just a tiny hint of brown sugar. But man, nixjerky.com, best freaking jerky and best sponsorship we've gotten in a long time. Um, we get I've free jerky it. out of this, so we get free you know, buy jerky. the shit out of it. Help, yeah. help some brothers out. I mean, <laughs> you know, I need more protein. It's uh, been so good. This is quality jerky. This is coming from somebody who was a butcher for seven years. I know my meat, and you can take that how you want to, but uh, yeah. this is real. It's high quality meat. It's done very well. And it is super tasty, and it's pretty reasonably priced. I don't know about you, but uh, jerky is very expensive where I live. Um, but anyway, Nick's jerky. It's N I K. <laughs> it's, it's Nick's N I K. Yes, here's here's the link right here. Are you, are you talking about that one? N I K S jerky. Yeah. Nick's jerky dot com. Make sure to spell that correctly, or else. The, or you know. yeah, we don't know. <laughs> we, we're links, not responsible we not for you. any links and or. <laughs> yep. Guys. It has been fun. I just want to say thank you again for uh, your support. We're up to 194 subs on the channel. We're getting closer to our uh, first goal of two, or our second goal of 250 uh, subs. That is to get us access to two more emoticons. By the way, when we do hit that goal, because I do believe we can hit that goal, um, we will also re uh, sort of revisit our old emoticons and put them up to vote. We, we want you guys to be the ones in control of those, like which ones we uh, have there. And if we have emoticons that aren't being used, uh, we want to get them replaced with stuff that uh, it is used. So um, yeah, so make sure to uh, check that out. But anyways, guys, this was your local No Guts, No Galaxy podcast, MechWare podcast, I, don't, I can't even, fuck it, we're done. I'm. I, and I was sitting here failing, trying to let Mech the Dane post a link to his uh, operation. Isn't it permit? You click on me and say permit. Yeah. Click on his All name. Right. You All right. it? Could you do it? Yeah. You Mac it? Dane, if you could for me, please uh, post a link to your YouTube video of your event that is coming up tomorrow, Friday, that I will be participating in, uh, and Phil may be participating as well. Um, Words. Mac, yes. Mac the Dane should be able to post it now. But anyway, click through, check it out. Hope to see you guys there tomorrow. And this was your local No Guts, No Galaxy Mech Warrior podcast signing off for tonight. This is Phil. And this is Darren. Until next time, Mech Warriors. Oh, it's just one of those days. By the way, if you stick around long enough, I will be playing. Don't go anywhere. Or I'll find you.